This is a presentation of Michigan State University's Knight Center for Environmental Journalism. Most of us don't imagine a simple day hike on our favorite trail can lead to unintended consequences. Seeds from one of the most destructive invasive plants, garlic mustard, may be hitching a ride on your boot. So garlic mustard is known as a woodland invader. Oftentimes it shows up in uh, campgrounds or at the, uh, the heads of forest hiking trails. Uh, people who may have been hiking in the southern um, part of the state uh, going north and accidentally transferring it to those areas. Garlic mustard threatens not only the state's forested lands, but is also starting to show up in people's backyards. It smothers native plants and can poison the soil. And if we are careful, we can pull the, the taproot. But you can see the, the large fleshy taproot that it has that stores energy over the winter and, and allows it to bolt very quickly in the spring. So these plants are quite remarkable. They stay green all winter and they will actually um, photosynthesize on any day that the temperature is above freezing. It was first introduced into Long Island probably as an herb, but it began showing up in southern Ohio, Indiana, and then rapidly spread northward throughout Michigan, Illinois, and it's still spreading in Michigan and many other regions as well. In southern Michigan, I think everybody recognizes that we have far more deer than the habitat can support. Deer will not eat garlic mustard. That has a dramatic impact on our native plant communities. I think a lot of people don't recognize it at all. They just think it's a natural plant by the roadside. But once you start seeing it, it's true. It tends to spread down trails. And it looks a little bit like English violets and a little bit like Creeping Charlie. But it's pretty easy to tell. In particular, if you rip the leaves, it smells garlicky. The seeds from the garlic mustard can persist for something like nine years. And there are hundreds of seeds per plant. So you don't want to put them in your yard waste. If you put it in your yard waste, it's composted and spread into everybody else's yards. Research has shown that many invasive plants in North America are not particularly aggressive in their home countries of origin. They're just part of the natural ecosystem. That suggests that there may be natural controls keeping them in check. Known as biological control agents, these natural controls are lost when the plants are introduced to a new home. Uh, classical biological control or importation biological control is based on that sort of concept and then going back to the country of origin of the, of the plant and looking to see if you can find uh, the factors that, that seem to control it in its home range. In the 1980s, when the problem of purple loosestrife, an exotic plant from Europe and Asia, started to become an ecological threat, the National Fish and Wildlife Service and the United States Department of Agriculture got together to look for potential biological control agents. In the case of purple loosestrife, um, there was a very effective biological control program implemented mm -hmm. and uh, through the action of the Gallarcella beetle, mm -hmm. uh, which is a beetle that feeds on purple loosestrife, mm -hmm. uh, it, the abundance of loosestrife has been uh, decreased uh, in, uh, throughout much of its range in Michigan. To tackle the growing problem of garlic mustard, Swiss scientists at the Center for Agricultural Bioscience International CABI, tested for the most effective potential biocontrol agents from a list of more than 70 natural enemies found to be feeding on garlic mustard in Europe. So the root crown feeding weevil, Pseudorhynchus scrobicolis, uh, lays its eggs in the fall uh, and those, the larvae tunnel into the root crown where they, uh, where they feed on the root crown. If it's just one or two larvae, the plant will be stunted and produce fewer seeds. But if there's multiple larvae per stem, it can actually kill the plant outright. And that's what um, causes the level of control. For scientists, time is their enemy. If they wait for nature to take its course, the native bugs will take too long to develop an appetite to help control the exotic plant. However, if they act too quickly and introduce a new species into the environment, the consequences could lead to disaster. The biocontrol agent really requires the target plant as its only food source and therefore when the target plant declines in abundance, this insect also declines in abundance and is unable to feed on other plants in this system. Something like garlic mustard, there are now millions of them throughout the Midwest and as far as we know, none of the millions of species of insects in North America have yet adapted to feed on it. 
Mm -hmm. So that suggests that a switch in diet of a potential herbivore, it will happen over some evolutionary time span, but not over short time spans. Control of purple loosestrife has been the poster child for a successful program. Loosestrife is still present in the wetlands where it was present before, mm -hmm. but instead of being a, a dominant plant, maybe six to eight feet tall, mm -hmm. uh, it's now a, a plant, just one of many, that sort of uh, hangs out in the understory and kind of struggles to survive. In the absence of a natural enemy or a biocontrol agent, the garlic mustard is spreading at an explosive rate. That's what we're all doing is waiting for the biocontrol to hopefully be the magic bullet. Until then, the key thing is to pick satellite areas like this where it's just starting to spread into a new area and keep pushing it back. And if you keep pushing it back, it won't take over, you know, your, your valued areas. When you've gone walking on a trail where you know there was garlic mustard, you just brush the bottom of your shoes or boots off and then you don't contribute to spreading it further.